Hi viewers, um, this is going to be an update video to the Quantel Paintbox V-Series um, machine that I looked at a few months ago. Um, if you've not seen those videos, I'll stick a link to them in the video description. Basically I picked this up, uh, it's a non-working Quantel Paintbox V-Series. I've done a bit of diagnostics work on this already, tracked down um, a bus error that was uh, happening on the Motorola 68000 processor, tracked it down to the actual address range which is causing the bus error, but unfortunately because I don't have the service manuals, um, I don't actually know where that address maps to physically on all of these, um, these boards that are in this machine. There's actually six in total. Now I kind of suspect that uh, this main CPU board is probably functioning okay. Uh, I think the problem might lie on one of the other boards or the communication between them. Um, there's a number of uh, buffer and line driver ICs um, generally over in this area of all the boards um, which seems to transfer the 68 bus um, onto the back plane and onto the other card. So I am suspecting that this uh, bus error might be the communication between this board and the other ones. So what I'm going to do is just uh, blindly replace some of the buffer ICs that are sort of located in this area on these boards and just see whether that makes any difference. Um, another thing that I'm going to do is just replace the two non-volatile RAMs that are on here. These were completely flat uh, and they're completely empty now so I've got uh, some new ones to go in. Um, hopefully uh, that won't be wasted money and I'll be able to get this working eventually. Um, still don't know what the contents of those would have been but I think that if I can get this up and running and booting then the actual Quantel software itself can refill whatever goes into these non-volatile RAMs. So I've got a big bag of uh, 7 4 series logic. Um, there's, it's not complete. I, I wasn't able to get all of the different types of ICs that are on this board. There are a few that um, I can still get in dip, um, just like uh, is on the board here but um, the only place I can find them is on eBay for like five pounds each so that's not going to happen. Um, you can still buy the exact same chip but in a, um, a surface mount package so I'm probably going to have to look at those in the future possibly with a, an adapter PCB to um, adapt the pins to the um, DIP24 that's actually on here so we'll look at that in a future video. Now because I've got a load of desoldering to do now, um, I thought it was about time I got myself a, a, a proper desoldering tool. Uh, previously I had been using my um, LF1000 uh, uh, soldering station, that's a Zitronic, and uh, the good old vacuum pump, um, hand pump thing. Uh, but I have just acquired a nice new Zitronic LF8800, which is a solder and desolder station. Now, while I was looking around for desoldering stations, I was actually contacted by uh, Rykelt, which is a catalog company. Uh, it turns out they've been watching my channel and like what I do, and they offered to donate some equipment to me uh, to help my channel. So um, they very kindly um, allowed me to have this Zitronix LF8800 uh, uh, soldering and desoldering station. So we're going to be using that today. Uh, we'll give that a quick try out. I will also be doing a separate review video on this as, as well. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested. So uh, Rykelt is a catalogue company. Uh, they're very similar to um, Farnell, RS, uh, Rapid and stuff like that. They've, they've got everything in there from uh, consumer electronics to test gear and uh, electronic components. So well worth checking out and they're often um, either got products that aren't in the other catalogues or they might even be a bit cheaper as well so there's links to uh, the Rykelt website in the dis video description below. Okay the first thing I'm going to replace is these two here just because they're nearest the uh, nearest the port um, so these are CD74ACT245Es uh, so I'm just going to do those two first plug it in back into the machine, power it on, see what happens. So I'll just slowly go in through and do uh, and do that. Now one thing I have noticed, which is um, somewhat of a pain in the arse, uh, so we've got uh, the two devices just here, so that's one and then the other one is just there. Now one thing I have noticed on this is when this was originally constructed, um, they have folded the pins over. 
uh, which is going to make this a real pain in the arse for unsoldering. Um, the pads are also really, really small. They're hardly bigger than the drill hole, so um, it looks also like the leg is quite a tight fit in the hole as well. So these could take a bit of a uh, um, a bit of time to desolder properly. So what I'm going to do, um, just to make my life a little bit easier, is I'm just going to go through and, and resolder all these, put a nice big blob of solder on them, um, so I can also lever up the pin to make it straight so I can e extract the IC out. Uh, and then I will go through and um, desolder each of these, and hopefully it will come off fairly easily. Right, I've finally got that um, extracted out of there. Um, took a lot of um, effort to do that. I did a lot of, lot of it off camera because uh, my camera's right next to me and um, I didn't have a lot of room to, to do it um, with the size of this board. So um, I had to move the camera out of the way. Um, part of the problem was the, um, the size of the solder pads and the drill holes and the pin. The pin is a very tight fit into the hole and the solder pad itself is really small. So um, there's not a lot of contact area to get the solder tool on. So a little bit of a challenge, took a few goes, but got there in the end. So um, I will now solder in a socket um, and um, we can drop a new chip in there and just see if it makes any difference. And if it doesn't, I'll move on to the next one. Um, I, I'm guessing that one will be slightly easier because um, the more I do, the better I'll get at it. Okay, that one didn't do anything at all. It's uh, still just the same, so I'm just going to carry on, do the next. Well, there's the other one. Um, in some ways, it's slightly easier. Some ways, it's slightly harder. There was one pin which it just wouldn't um, wouldn't unsolder for some reason. So, uh, but all the other ones were a little bit easier than uh, the ones previously. So, uh, I'm obviously getting better at it. <laughs> uh, obviously, take a bit of time to get used to using um, this uh, desoldering tool rather than the uh, the old hand pump. Right, uh, that uh, re replacement IC didn't make any difference either, so I'm going to carry on. Uh, I'm probably going to 
just change these few just here once I've done those if, if uh, nothing makes any difference and I'll probably move on to one of the other boards and um, see if that makes any difference. Um, uh, I've also swapped out those um, static rams uh, with the battery backup. Um, that's just a quick pop out the socket and drop in the new one. Um, obviously there's don't really have to worry about the contents of them yet until the system is able to boot. So um, I'm going to carry on. It's going to take some time so um, if I drop lucky and something changes then I will do an up update video. So um, thanks again to uh, Rykelt for supplying the new uh, the new kit. That's been very very useful. It would have taken a lot longer with the old um, uh, manual pump. Um, so thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.